Let me read to you a passage from the 11th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 27 to 33. It's the Gospel for Saturday of the 8th week of Ordinary Time. St. Mark writes, Jesus and his disciples returned once more to Jerusalem. As he was walking in the temple area, the chief priests, the scribes and the elders approached him and said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I shall ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was John's baptism of heavenly or of human origin? Answer me. They discussed this among themselves and said, If we say, of heavenly origin, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But, shall we say, of human origin? They feared the crowd, for they all thought John really was a prophet. So they said to Jesus in reply, We do not know. Then Jesus said to them, Neither shall I tell you by what authority I do these things. That's from Mark chapter 11, verses 27 to 33. And what does that suggest to us? Well, it is very clear from the Gospels that a striking feature of our Lord's person and public ministry was the very authority he displayed and exercised. We could say that during the brief span of his ministry, there was a time when no one in the nation commanded the spiritual authority he did. At his first appearance on the scene, in a public sense, the prophet John pointed to him as the one who was to come. And that was before he began to show his qualities and prowess. The people marvelled at the authority he displayed over the demons, who seemed to be in abundance at the time of Christ. And we could ask, what book of the Bible, outside the Gospels, shows them to be so active? His disciples wondered at who this man could be, who commanded the wind and the sea, and it obeyed him. He cured the sick, he raised the dead, he pronounced unhesitatingly on the important things of the law and on the meaning of the scriptures. In effect, he set himself above Moses and the prophets. He said there is a greater than Solomon and Jonah here. He taught new doctrine. We remember how he said, but I say to you, contrasting himself with his predecessors. Without authorization, he cleansed the temple. He claimed an authority no one else had claimed and he acted on it by backing it up with incomparable miracles. He calmly and unhesitatingly forgave sins, and immediately backed up his authority to do this by working an astounding miracle in the sight of all. There was also the authority of his very holiness, and he claimed to be holy. He asked, can any of you convict me of sin? And he said, I always do what pleases him, that is, the Father. Most significantly, he made claims about himself that had no precedent in the experience of the, of the religious authorities and mysteriously put himself on a par with God his Father. But our Lord in due course was rejected by many. One of his own chosen apostles, selected deliberately out of the body of his disciples to be one of the twelve, 
spectacularly left and betrayed him and then came to a bad and tragic end. When our Lord preached his doctrine of the Eucharist at Capernaum, we are told by John in chapter 6 that many of his disciples left him. It was too much for them, they said. In fact, our Lord's authority was not accepted by the body of the nation's religious leaders. In our Gospel today, they come to him and demand to know the basis of his authority to say and do what he was doing. He could see it was useless to explain this to them, for they would not believe. He pointed to the testimony of John, asking them about his authority, John's authority. But they evaded his question. What does this refusal to accept the authority and revelation of Christ remind us of? It reminds us that no matter what steps God takes to provide signs of his action and revelation, we must be disposed and ready to receive them. We must be disposed to seek conscientiously to know the truth that has been revealed from on high and to assent to it generously. At root, the problem for man is the disposition of his will, the direction of his fundamental free choices and preferences. He is responsible for the goodness of his choices, and the most serious of his choices is what he takes to be the truth. That is not to say that at any one point we are responsible for not having attained the full truth that has been revealed by God. But we are responsible for our desire to know it and our readiness to accept it as it comes to us in the scriptures and in the teaching of the church he founded and of which he is the living head. The scribes and elders of our passage today showed they did not desire to know the truth and were not ready to accept it. In our own way, we can be like them. And if we are, then the response of Christ will be similar to his response to them. He will not favour us with more of his light and his grace. As he said to them, at their negative reply to him, Neither shall I tell you by what authority I do these things. Let us pray for the grace of a very great faith in Jesus.